everyone, back again here with Scott. We've got a surprise guest on this week. But Scott, I'll leave it to you. You know, if you want to introduce him a little bit, uh, you know, about what his company is, what he's the president of, and we'll go from there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thanks for having us here, Jason. Honored to be here with uh, with David Work. He's the uh, the president of Sophos Investments. Sophos Investments is one of the portfolio companies, one of the companies that we own, Financial Gravity. And Dave, you know, we're uh, really looking forward to get to uh, to hear a little bit more about your story. You know, Dave, I'd love to hear, how do you get involved in fin- in the financial world? You know, maybe even start us off with where you went to school, what for. I'm assuming it's going to be something finance related, but I'm ready for a curveball if there is one. And then kind of walk us through, you know, your uh, your career path and how you got involved with, you know, now, uh, you know, Sophos Investments and Financial Gravity. Well, I was attracted from very early days to business. You know, my, my mom and dad used to say, I could. I could do anything I wanted as long as it was doctor or lawyer. And I just wasn't particularly interested in those things. I, I was attracted to being in business. And so I went, I went to school at Cal Berkeley and I went to the school of business there and I studied business and I graduated and I looked around, thought, what will I do in my career? It was going to be in the context of sales. And I was offered an opportunity to become a stockbroker at Dean Witter. And I took it. I was for a brief moment, the youngest stockbroker at Dean Witter. Now this is in the days before the word diversification had been invented, Uh, but the word cold calling had been invented. It's as old school as you can get. Uh, And so, you know, I, I learned at the, at the school of hard knocks about how investors work, how they operate, what's important to them and how to try to navigate in an enormously complicated and and often confusing and and uh, ultra competitive marketplace, and I found that to be invigorating and exciting. I, I like being one of the ones who made it through. And this, I have something in common with Scott Winters, whose career, by the way, at Merrill was certainly greater than mine at Dean Witter. Uh, and so uh, I stayed with the idea of business and sales. And I I went into banking software from being a stockbroker and I enjoyed some success in that. And a company I helped build up was was merged into a public entity. And I I'd heard that there were these people living at my house that were my children. And I thought it would be a good idea for me to get to know them. So I made a career change and um, and I became a financial advisor with Sanford Bernstein. I, I went to New York for several months and they trained me up. Um, well, I didn't realize then that I wasn't really a financial advisor. I was a product wholesaler. But what I was selling was Bernstein. I was just selling it to retail people. So in that sense, I wasn't truly a wholesaler, but it was the same business practices. And so I, I, I learned about the very competitive environment that exists out there for um, that competes for the business of financial advisors and for the money of ultimate retail investors. And I stayed with financial advisory and um, my, my role was always to raise the capital. It wasn't to manage the portfolios. Uh, you wouldn't think of me as an investment officer. You would think of me as someone who learned the jargon of and learned from some incredibly brilliant people about how money is managed, you know, ethically and responsibly and successfully. But I was always interested in the people part of it. And that led me to, to uh, helping a couple of different Bay Area businesses grow pretty significantly. When the tech rec, ha- no, excuse me, when the financial meltdown happened back in 2009, it, it had profound effects on everyone and that included me. And I decided I wanted to do something different. And I, I, I met Scott Winters and he showed me a platform that knocked me out. And I thought with this tool, we can make a huge difference. Uh, When I joined his company then, we were relatively small. I think we had 11 people. And I think we had something like 120 million in assets under management, something like that. And three years later, we we had a billion dollars in assets under management because the market really liked what we had. We combined asset management with practice management and with real empathy. And at the end of the day, we offered a better value proposition than what advisors were able to get. 
Scott and Rob Nelson, who's also part of the Financial Gravity family and the CEO of Sophos Investments, re you know, really profoundly impressed me with his personality and his ability. And so I left the firm that we all worked at. I became the president of a $350 million RIA in San Francisco. Um, and I enjoyed that work. And I, I thought that what the way we should differentiate ourselves was with our technology and with a focus on the ultimate value prop, reducing costs, paying close attention to the individual treatment of each individual client as a kind of a precious asset of our firm and using a meritocratic way of building out the delivery platform that involved the same essential partners that we're using here at Sophos, TD Ameritrade, Orion Advisor, and perhaps not necessarily most importantly, but critically importantly, Salesforce as an engine for building business processes, streamlining operations, and greatly reducing cost. So when I got a look at what had been put together here by Scott and the team at Financial Gravity, I was, you know, compelled to get involved in it again, because I believe that we can, uh, we can scale infinitely and we can make a, a really important contribution. We can do something important. We can do well by, by doing good. We can help advisors build stronger, better practices with higher client loyalty. And, and we can, um, you know, we can build a significant company along the way. So I'm really happy to be here. Dave, you know, let me ask you a question. Um, you know, you're, we brought you in not too long ago to be the president of Sophos and as one of the portfolio companies of financial gravity, we're really, really excited about Sophos investments and, and what it brings to, you know, to the whole, uh, advisor community. What do you feel are the real value propositions? What sets Sophos investments apart? What, what makes it unique? Well, Scott, I think if you took a, a Venn diagram and you said, what is it that the investor wants? You know, why, and, and how can we find that sweet spot where the, where the, the things that the investor can discreetly identify can all come together? I think that's what we have here at Sophos Investments. And, and it's grounded in the idea, if we can do a great job and build a sustainable, long-term, mutually beneficial relationship with investors. That's the best thing that we could do for the advisors that work with those investors. But what is it that investors want? Well, what they want is trust. They want to believe that what they're doing is the right best path for them. They want the firm they work with to be fully transparent and to operate as a fiduciary, always to take the best possible care of that client as if they were you know, as if they were ourselves. It's a golden rule of fiduciary. They want low costs and they want us to offer them the same advantages ultimately that are offered to people who are already extremely wealthy. You know, so just to go on for a bit about this, there's really only one group of people in the entire financial advisory community who seem to be completely satisfied with their lives. And that's the family offices. I mean, you never hear about a family office firing a family officer or a client never virtually fires their family office. And why? Because their advisor is virtually a family member. The bond of trust is so high. And because family offices operate with scale, costs for the client are very low. Family offices are known and notable for paying an enormous amount of attention to taxes. So we want to build portfolios that the investor can stick with and that will unite the investor and the client in a lifetime journey that will end successfully it will focus on low costs it will focus on high trust it will pay attention to taxes and it will focus on things that include the emotional and behavioral component of investing which is perhaps the most expensive component of all so here at sophos we're focused on the client, the human. So we stand in opposition, in effect, to the robo platforms, which want to take the human being out of it. We want to put the human being into the portfolio and go on a lifelong journey with them. 
So Dave, um, Sophos is a turnkey asset management platform. Um, can you explain to the, the viewers what turnkey asset management platform means? So the definition of it is it's a technology that a financial advisor, an independent financial advisor or a firm, an advisory firm can connect to that will provide them access to portfolios, to unified managed accounts, and to a sophisticated investing practices and styles that eliminate the need for them to have a middle or back office operation. It allows them to focus their energy on the, on the practical side of managing their business. Because the reality is financial advisors are really only compensated for doing two things, for managing clients and acquiring new ones. This is the thing I first heard from you, by the way, Scott, years ago. I know that's why I'm laughing. <laughs> true today and it will be as true tomorrow as ever. The Turnkey Asset Management Platform allows the advisor to do exactly that, to focus on what they do best, to build the bonds of trust, to understand and empathize with their client, and to spend the maximum amount of time that is available to them during their day doing the thing that the, that the client is paying them to do, which is take care of them. What, what sets Sophos apart. What what differentiates Sophos from the competition? Well, that's that's a that's the sixty four thousand dollar question, of course. Is it, you know why Sophos? And it it kind of gets to a statement of beliefs. But we believe that the winner in this very large marketplace, dominated by giant players, in entrenched companies that have many, many billions of assets and very large staffs and really haven't innovated many of them in a long time. What, what sets the sort of winners and losers apart in that space is their ability to empathize and focus with the reality of what life is for a financial advisor. So you and I have both competed against companies that were thousands of times our size and won mandates, taken assets from them because we understand and empathize with the life of a financial advisor first and foremost. We understand, I think ultimately, where failure is born. Failure is born because costs are too high, because trust is too low, because services are not up to the experience that the client demands. And ultimately, failure is born when expectations don't match reality. Sophos is here to integrate the human and behavioral component of investing, because that is where expectations can be set properly. And we've innovated with tools, modern tools, that help us guide the client to a sustainable investing experience. These are tools that are not available at our competitors that help us monitor, you know, help us measure and ascertain what the real risk profile of a client is, what they're really able to stick with. Because perhaps the most expensive component in all of investing is a failure to sustain. It's a capitulation. It's selling uh, low and buying high. This is where the real destruction happens for most retail and mass affluent investors. So we focus on the end client and work through the advisor to deliver a sustainable experience. I think that alone is the most important thing that we do. You know, it's amazing that, you know, you, both of you guys are looking at, and, and Scott, you know, to put words in your mouth a little bit here, a lot of the companies in the financial gravity kind of family feel like they're really caring about what the client wants, but also realizing what are the pain points for the actual advisors, um, you know, whether it's the financial planners, financial advisors, investment planners, you name it, it seems like you know you guys are really caring well look if i was an investor this is what i care about this is what we see the data this is what they care about and they want to be treated they want to make it seem like they're special and if you're the advisor you want to try and grow your portfolio you want to try and get it to the next level so they have to decide well do i put more time into caring about the people but not growing as fast or do i grow faster but you know obviously drop the ball a little bit more on the on the personal side and it seems like you guys have a perfect solution where they're able to use your systems use your process to win on both sides yeah jason i mean there's three words that um 
personify what you just said, and that's applied behavioral finance. Um, it's really easy. It's easy to manage money. I mean, there's, um, I don't know, there's more mutual funds and money managers out there than there are individual stocks. It's crazy. Um, the, the hard part is managing people's expectations. The hard part is managing people's, um, you know, ability to, to stay the course. And, and there are a lot of studies that say the average investor loses three and a half to 4% a year, every single year of their life, because their emotions, both fear and greed, cause them to do the wrong thing at the wrong time. And, and that's just tragic. I mean, if you extrapolate out three to four percentage points loss every single year over an investor's lifetime, it's just a boatload of money. Um, it, it's the difference between um, living a lifestyle that, that, that people dream of and living a lifestyle that gives people the, uh, the ability to retire with dignity, um, give people a lifestyle um, that allows them to do the things that they want to do, spend time with their, their grandchildren, have a vacation home be the person that they want to be and, and, and failure. Um, it, it, it's just, it, it can't be overemphasized enough that the ability to help people invest, to protect themselves from themselves is such an important part of this whole equation. But yes, I, I agree with what you said, Jason. Interesting that not many people realize that side of it. You, know, you got to protect yourself from yourself, let other people be the experts. But part of that involves a lot of trust. And with that, um, you know, you guys touched on it, um, both of you at different times where you want to feel special. You want to feel like you're getting the same, I guess, service that someone with a hundred times, you know, your, uh, like your valuation, I guess, or your amount of money has. And I think that's a, that's fantastic that you guys kind of give that one-stop shop and that process. And just to go on and, you know, Dave, I'd love to hear the answer on you guys have both gone, gone up against these fortune 500 companies, these massive companies, investment companies, and you guys are able to battle back and take market share away and find value. How do you guys plan? What's your kind of like sales, I guess, or growth strategy with Sophos? Really the beauty part is if, if you want to build a large company, start with a large marketplace and the marketplace of financial advisors is a big one it's hundreds of thousands of, in, of professionals and individuals and that's just the licensed ones there are many people who work in advisories as well because this is a very large marketplace and supporting tens of millions of people so we want to cover that footprint as well as we can the way i think of it is we want many doors many many ways to enter into our world so whether you come in because you're an insurance-based professional or a certified financial planner, or you're a person with a lot of deep expertise in money management and in seeking alpha, whether you're an asset gatherer or whether you're a, 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 a planning oriented, long-term oriented financial advisor, however you come to the marketplace, there will be commonalities to win in the long term, you must be a fiduciary. You must act in concert with and free of, and to the extent you can be, free of conflict with your client. You have to think about long term in the same way that you ask your clients to think about long term. And so we're, you know, altruism is great and it feels good and it sounds great. But at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is deliver more value because that will build us a bigger company. So we're, we're thinking, why do advisors fail? Why do some advisors have clients that stay with them intragenerationally? In other words, you have the client, you have their children, and if you live long enough, eventually their grandchildren. What kind of an advisory what are the components of that? What are the psychological components, the systems components, the technological components, the portfolio components of those things? And if you had the ability to start a firm and you could create it built around those, those values, we believe you should do it because you're going to be more competitive. 
So having been financial advisors, having worked with financial advisors, having experiences with hundreds of broker dealer firms and with hundreds of money management firms, we learned a few things along the way about how to compete and how to win. Interesting. And just to talk, I guess a little bit more on, let's talk onboarding maybe, you know, so your guys goal obviously is to onboard as many of these financial advisors as possible. Do you have a strategy at which you're going out and you're trying to onboard these financial advisors? What's kind of the, the process to get people interested in SOFOs? Yeah. So let me cut in there for one second. Um, you know, I don't think we want to onboard as many financial advisors as possible into SOFOs investments. And Dave, you know, I'd like you to talk about that. I think that that's a really important point. This is something that we know something about, by the way. Jason, we know something about hiring the masses and firing, you know, the ones that don't work out. Yeah. Uh, it's expensive to work with people who aren't committed. It's, uh, it, it not only is expensive in terms of, you know, just operational costs and licensing costs, it's expensive in terms of opportunity cost. We want to build a company of like-minded people who share our values who believe as what we believe, not, not, not just because it's effective, but because it's the right thing to do. And so we're interested in building partnerships in a vertical chain from the investor all the way up to the top of financial gravity, the holding company. And we want that chain to be as strong as it can possibly be. So we're looking for people who believe what we believe, who believe as we believe, and who understand that we've built this platform uh, in a in this vertical construct so that is open to change and evolution over time we, we we know we can learn from every partner in the chain and we want to continue to do that but we also know that we can build on some fundamental truths and we understand that at the end of the day the person who delivers the best experience for the best value will be the one who wins Interesting. I think it's a fantastic answer. Well, I, I'm good. Scott, is there anything you want to ask? <laughs> you know, I, I think it's been a, a terrific interview. Um, you know, I, I, Jason, what I'd love to, to leave us with is, you know, as the CEO of, um, of Financial Gravity, I'm so very proud of all of our portfolio companies. I, I think that what Sophos is doing is extremely sexy and, and interesting and and it's, um, it's market changing. I mean, we're talking about um, you know, the best technology in the TAMP space. I mean, I, I, I don't think anybody's gonna compete with technology that, that, that they bring to the table. Um, I, I, I think that nobody is attacking the behavioral finance aspect of investing the way Sophos is attacking it and, and really helping the end client understand, you know, not only who they are, but how they should invest. I think that the fees are more competitive for what they provide than than anybody else in the industry. Um, I don't know how anybody else is going to win. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a good uh, good statement. I mean, I think it's just really awesome the way that you guys have positioned, and also something that you guys say without saying, and so I'll say it. You guys have done this before. You guys have lived through other companies that are doing something similar. You know the issues that both yourself as an investor have, but also the issues that yourself as a financial advisor had. So it's interesting, um, you know, being able to bring both sides and put them into a company and now trying to solve those issues. And that's how a lot of the best companies are born. So I think that's fantastic. And you guys are doing it right. Right.